How do these colonial types of political relationships affect the average person in these countries in South America? Uh, before before I speak on that, I, I just wanted to clarify that in the, the situation in in in, in so-called Latin America is is a, a little distinct from the African situation. In, in the African situation, I would say you could call it a neo-colonial situation, where you have African African leaders themselves uh, being the uh, collaborators or, or mediators between the Europe. Uh, imperialist Europe and the oppressed majority of African people um, but if you see the the situation in, in on our continent in the so-called Americas uh, you'll see that the majority are actually European governments led by European people uh, you have some neo-colonial some countries where you could say possibly a neo-colonial he, but I, I still wouldn't call it neo-colonial. You have countries like Peru. The president of, of Peru is in, uh, is an indigenous man, Ujanta Umala, but he he uh, he's a collaborator. So you, so you could say he's a he's a puppet of of the European class of the European settler class. Uh, but the government itself is still based around colonial policies. It's still it's still very much a colonial institution, and the people who um, who run it, the people who lead the government, in their in their majority, not all of them, but in the majority, are of European descent and are of uh, European class who have historically oppressed them. So, the, so you, so the situation in, on our continent is quite distinct from from the African situation. In terms of the living conditions of of, of people uh, living under these colonial states, I guess in, it, I guess for, for it to you know there's there's a um, we we usually explain it very uh, black and white. You know, we always say the the colonized versus the, the colonials. It's not always that way. Um, is is it's obviously that there can be you know uh, complicated more complicated uh, relationships um, in a country like Colombia you have um, the majority uh, of the people like I've said already who live uh, below the poverty line um, you have some people who some of our, our own people, indigenous uh, people who who live um, I wouldn't say well off but in, in secure jobs um, but they but you, but you wouldn't you wouldn't say they are a powerhouse you wouldn't say they they would they would be able to eventually take power from the the colonials or, or that they could take over from the colonials. Uh, it's still very much a very controlled uh, colonial system. Um, yeah, so the uh, an example I guess I could give an extreme example in in Colombia is uh, a place called Buenaventura, which is a coastal area. is a, is is the port. Uh, you know, historically, it's been a very important port in in Colombia. Um, the majority of the population are Africans. African, uh, they they call them Afro-Colombians, but really the the Africans who were who were enslaved and taken there uh, during colonial times, and they live in utmost poverty, uh, in animal-like conditions, in uh, shanty towns and um, in, uh, you wouldn't even be able to call it houses it's uh, homes made of of um, mud uh, made of um, sheets of metal yeah not not proper structures or to, to, for, for you to call it a, a proper house um a lot of them live on the 
live off in, informal of the informal sector which is them basically just trying to survive looking for whatever product they can buy themselves and sell it themselves uh, so not really tied to the formal economy of the country uh, you have a big European companies operating in the port who come and um, recruit cheap labor uh, disposable cheap labor because once people start getting too old if somebody's got an illness if somebody uh, you know it's just a very insecure jobs where, where you know, people are just um, dispensable you know um, and what's happening in that region right now is that the Colombian government want to take over that port and displace the people from that uh, port. I'm not. Sh I'm not exactly sure how many people are there, but it's tens of thousands, tens of thousands of people who live there. They've created a plan for the port, and the way the architects have have um, have planned the, the port region does not involve the population that lives there now. So, so basically what they've said with this plan is that we need to get rid of all these people but take into consideration um, if it was in a yeah in, in Europe or, or in some parts of North America um, companies would be able to develop these plans and then the government would say okay so these people have to be moved into some kind of town and into some kind of city uh, provided with housing and the rest of the social uh, needs that they need um, but no these people are being murdered uh, they're being forcefully displaced forcefully displaced from their homes yeah they're just being displaced with no they're not being given any assurance of housing they're not being given assurance of moving to a place where, where, where they can uh, live you know as normal human beings um, and so this tells you the the mentality of the colonial state, which is these people are these these are not even people; they're creatures. You, you can murder them. Uh, they call them the um, I forget the word in Spanish, but it's basically the how they've they've found houses in this port region where people are chopped up, literally chopped up into pieces and put into uh, black. Uh, bin bags. Um, I think it's called Las Casas de, de Pica or the, something like that. Um, and yeah, and that's uh, that's an extreme case. Um, less less extreme and, and possibly the experience of the majority of uh, uh, the people in Colombia, indigenous people. You have the, the campesinos who uh, work hard to sustain themselves through agriculture, growing crops such as potatoes and, and so on, maize and so on. Um, and because of the trade agreement that the, the Colombian has with, that Colombia has with the United States and, and some countries in Europe, potatoes, rice, other agricultural products are being imported and sold on the market for very cheap prices. Well, the well, the product, but you'll see this everywhere on the continent. <laughs> uh, so they so they import the products from these imperialist nations, sold for cheap, while the products the, of the indigenous people, the farmers, um, are you know are left to rot because no nobody would buy them. Who who who's going to buy a, a potato for for the right price of it? The market's being flooded with uh, very cheap products from the outside. Um, the The Colombian government has no respect. The Colombian colonial government has no respect for the for the farmers, the agriculturalists. Why? Because to them, they don't consider them, you know, humans. They don't consider them. They're a, they're a uh, a government who serves themselves, their own class, their political class. The majority of the people have to survive on their own. 
Uh, and yeah, you see this across uh, society in urban areas. Uh, the situation for the urban people is not much, uh, it, it's not dissimilar. You have people who, um, you know, the, the, the case all around the continent, which is um, people uh, being forced to compete uh, for factory jobs for, for very low wages. So, so whoever is willing to work for the cheapest, they recruit. And once these people cannot work anymore for whatever reason, they're getting too old. And, and mind you, being old in Colombia as a worker is around 30 years old. Once you get to 30, it's getting too slow, getting too old. We need to, they need to be replaced. So the, the, that's, the, that's the kind of conditions uh, we have on our, uh, on our continent. So across the, the, the whole of our society, from factory workers to farmers to uh, to, fi uh, to, 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 to fish, uh, fish farmers um, on the ports, it is the same same situation of, of poverty, uh, poverty and violence from the state.